you're bringing the victory, Father, through uh, through your word, Father, and just learning obedience, Lord, through you, Father. Father, I just ask you, Lord, you just be with us through this uh, through this Bible study, Father, that you just uh, you just let your you just unleash your Holy Spirit down on us, Father. Father, just let it run from front to back, side to side, Father. Lord, if there's any chains or any bondage, Lord, that we're living in this morning, Father, that, release, that Lord, we were release, we release them, that we were that you release those chains, Father, that you just bring us out of that bondage, Father, Lord, that's keeping us from moving forward in life, Father, to where we can be nothing less but the best for you in all of our ways, Father. Father, I just ask you, Lord, you just anoint our brother Chris, Father, and the word that he brings this morning, Father, Lord, that you just that, that it just touches our heart, Father, that, that we can go forth and, and apply it to our lives, Father, and become better men for you. We love you, we praise you, we thank you, we ask all this in Christ Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hear our worship, Jesus. Hear our worship, as we gather in your name, we sing to you, Jesus. Hear us worship today as we come into unity in one body right now. One spirit and one mind. In our mind and our eyes. Set on you or set on above. Right now. We just worship you. We just lift up the name of you. Look at Johnny Boy, he's 
in fellas they don't have to stay in the outer courts no more come on in
baptized in the blood, bud. There you go. Whoa! A messenger of heaven. <laughs> well, that was awesome. That was so awesome. <laughs> What happened? Did it fly out of his hand? Yeah, just fell and knocked it over on everything. Knocked it right down right when I was talking junk. Fell down. <laughs> Christopher. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for this thank day. You, Jesus. Lord, we're just oh, we love you. happy to be here. Oh, you joy to be here. Mm, mm, mm. Happy to be alive. Lord, we just thank you that the word says, in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand pleasures forevermore. Lord, and we're seated, we're seated in your presence, and we thank you. Thank you for fullness of joy right now. Lord, that it's just not something that we're trying to attain, it has become a state of existence, because we're always in your presence. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. So we always have fullness of joy. Mm. Doesn't matter what's going on. We're going to laugh because he who sits in the heavens laughs. We're going to laugh in adversity. We're going to laugh in trials. We're going to laugh in famine. Hell and high water, we're going to laugh. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because the battle's already been won. It's already finished. You said it is finished, and you sat down. Hallelujah. And we're seated together with you in the victory. It's already done. It's already won. It's already finished. And if heaven be on our side, who can be against us? Lord, we just love you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your precious promises that are all yes and amen. We thank you for always giving us a way of escape through your word. Lord, you have literally taken out every excuse, and we just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now you've empowered us to take away every excuse. You're just so good. So good. Without you, we can do nothing, but with you, we can do all things. Thanks. All things. So move today in a mighty way by your Holy Spirit and in your word. Lord, I just pray for transformation, Lord, today that minds are being renewed. Lord, that we're expanding on the inside, that we're growing in the knowledge of you, that we're growing in wisdom and revelation, that we're growing in faith, that we're growing in strength, And it's not by our might, it's not by our power, but it's by your Spirit. And we just say thank you. We rest. We rest in your precious promises. And we just say thank you. In Jesus' name. <coughs> Hallelujah. What's up? Come on in. Come on in. Get comfortable. Get comfortable. Um, we've been talking about the renewing of the mind. In the Bible, the Bible says this is the way that we're transformed through the renewing of the mind. Amen? So, in Romans 12, 1 and 2, and also in James chapter 1, we see that this takes place through the Word of God. James says to receive the engrafted word with meekness, humility, that's able to sozo, and we've been looking at that, sozo your soul. So we looked at how we've been delivered, we've been healed, we've been preserved, we've been made sound, and we started looking at wholeness, and we're going to continue looking at that today. Of course, the last time we met, we, we 
dove into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and uh, I was really impacted that morning. I don't know about you guys, but man, the Lord is on the move. Amen. Amen. The Lord is on the move, and He wants to equip us. He's already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's already been given. You just have to receive it and operate in it. Has anybody else noticed that things are kind of coming easier? Mm-hmm. Has anybody noticed that? Like things are just happening that we've been talking about and praying about. And I'm not just talking about the ministry, but maybe in your personal lives. Like, you know, like your house. And you, you, I mean, boom, you get a house, you sold the old house, pop up. You, 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 boom, boom. And my house has been going to market. And it's all. I got M1. <laughs> yeah, are you are you noticing that things are kind of like, Amen. things are things are just. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, I, I think that's a time of uh, a unity, and our hearts and minds are just really are being set on the Lord. I think supernaturally, Amen. set on the Lord, and and to me, it's like a, a hunger to know Him, Amen. and things are just like. Yeah. I feel like I'm just, I'm not saying things are, are uh, everything's just hunky-dory. Because there's a lot of Yeah, there's a lot of opposition, in, but... a lot of distractions, but I'm just saying my mind is is set, you know, yeah. and things are just kind of. Amen. Yes. Anybody else experiencing that? I know I am. Amen. It's going to keep getting better and better. Mm-hmm. For real. The best is yet to come. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm serious. It's for real. You heard that, uh, been there, done that, got the t-shirt? Been there, done that, doing that, got the t-shirt. Got to get the boat, Nick. (laughs) Amen. So, uh, um... you're just, you're so off sometimes. (laughs) 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 Opposite of what I'm saying. (laughs) Everybody laughs. uh, It was funny, but... So we started talking about how God created man in His image. He was perfectly whole perfectly created in God's image. And God's desire from the beginning was that that the earth would cover be covered with his glory. He desired that man would produce godly offspring after his own kind after God's kind. But of course love love is always going to give you a choice. Love doesn't force you to do anything. So from the beginning he had Adam had the choice of the trees. And of course you eat this tree you're going to die. You eat this tree, you're going to live. This tree was the way that seems right to man and it leads to death. This tree is basically intimacy. It's everything we've been talking about. It's where we go and we fellowship with the Father and He pours into us and He releases life in us. And, of course, we know, we looked at a couple weeks ago or a couple meetings ago when we talked, we looked at how Adam chose the tree of knowledge of good and evil and then next thing you know, instead of producing after God's kind, he produced after that selfish decision that he made. And then everybody that entered into the earth from that point on was born into that selfish nature, and that's why we have to be born again. Right? We have to be born from above. Amen? So, the very first thing, listen, the very first thing that Jesus says, and I want to piggyback off of that, because when Adam ate from that tree, it affected everybody. Right, So when we make those decisions, it doesn't just affect us. It can have a generational impact. So the very first thing that Jesus says about being a disciple, He says we have to what? We have to deny ourselves. Pick up our cross and follow Him. The only thing that God is calling us to give up is what we were never meant to be. We were never meant to be selfish from the beginning. And that's the only thing he's asking us to give up. Deny yourselves. It doesn't say deny the devil, right? It says deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. So I want to look at, I want to look at Matthew 16, where that verse is actually located. But before, before we get there, so we've been looking at this how we have to have our 
We've got to have our mind renewed. This spirit man has been made in the image of God. It's been made of incorruptible seed. But now our mind has to be renewed. Now the last time we met, we, we talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it says, out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. Now we've got the seed planted in our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And as we pray, we've been talking about going back to the garden, restoration. As we pray, that water comes up from our spirit and begins to water the seeds that are in our soul. begins to water. And it's the same way if you go back to the beginning in Genesis, in the beginning when God would, would, would water the seed in the ground, it would come from the ground. The water would come from the ground in the beginning. Right? So this water comes up, waters these seeds, and then we begin to produce that life that's on the inside. Now, it's all a choice. It's all a choice. I want to look at Prior to Jesus saying we have to deny ourselves to pick up our cross, I want to go back. So, Matthew 16, Peter has this awesome revelation. Jesus asks him, who do men say that I am? You know, and then he says, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus is like, wow, that's amazing. He says, flesh and blood has not re- revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And he's just like rocking it. Peter's like, yeah, you know, got it. (laughs) The very next thing, though, watch this. Let's go to verse 21, Josh, 16 and 21. Matthew 16, 21. From that time, Jesus began to show His disciples that He must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took Him aside and began to rebuke Him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. So that happened back to back? Back to back. All right, so you got your, you got your, your revelation from God, and then you got the devil coming along. Trying exactly. to trail behind. Yeah, that's right. And he said, Listen, I want you all to think about this. Stop relating yourself stop saying I'm just a man that's demonic the apostle Paul rebuked the Corinthian church he says you guys are behaving like mere men we're not mere men we've been born again we've been born of the spirit yeah yeah. we're part of something as, as sons that's right I'm tired of hearing that. I'm just a man. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're born again. You're born of the Spirit. You're born from above. You got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You got the blood of Jesus. Like He has literally taken out every single excuse. He overcame the world. He overcame the flesh. And He overcame the devil. Jesus did. And He sat down and now we're seated in that victory. Everything that we failed at, Everything that the first Adam fell at, the last Adam came and yeah. he conquered Conquer. and he overcame and he won the victory and he sat down and now we're seated with him in that victory. And the, story, the story of the prodigal son tells us that everything that I have is yours. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It always was. He says right here, mm-hmm. when he made this statement, this false statement about Jesus, he rebukes him and says, get behind me, Satan. Of course, we know he wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking about the spirit of Satan that was influencing him. Mm-hmm. But he says, now you're not being mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. So to think like a man is satanic. Listen, you either have the mind of Christ or you have the mind of Satan. There is no, this is what I think. This is what I feel. And that's what we've been learning. Yeah. We've got to renew our mind. Yeah. If you're not what for he, me, you're against me. That's right. There is no gray area. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Amen. And that's what we're learning. Receive the engrafted Word that's able to save your soul. Listen, the soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. We have to change the way we think, fellas. 
We have to change the way we think about ourselves. We have to change the way we think about God. We have to change the way we think about the things that are going on in this earth. We have to change our perception. We have to stop thinking like a mere man and start thinking like God because we have the mind of Christ. And to do that, you have to be like a child. Yes. Because you've got to receive the Word with meekness. What does that mean? Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Well, yeah, this is how I think. Humble yourself. That's not how God tells you to think. That's pride. I'm sorry. Well, this is how I feel. Humble yourself. You know why? Because God says pride comes before the fall. You're going to fall if you keep doing that. It comes before destruction. You're going to be destroyed. Well, that's just the emotions I was born with. Well, you need to get your emotions renewed. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you need to be born again. Well, it needs yeah. to be renewed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the new heart. Now you need to get your 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 thinker, your chooser, and your feeler mm-hmm. on board with this. Yeah. Whereas pre-birth, you had no control over those things. Right. right. Really. I mean, you could discipline yourself, but you didn't have any spiritual control. You, you know, you had no power. The spirit, right? That's right. Self-control. Self-control. That's right. You. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. When you when you were when you were in the world and you didn't have a regenerated spirit, um, you were carnally minded. You know, you were. It's, which is equal to death. death. Yeah. There's not. There's. There's nothing really you could have done about it. I mean, there's good people and people who are disciplined themselves and who study hard and do the right thing. But without that regenerated spirit, the Holy Spirit on the inside. We really had no power over over sin. You can feel when that sinful nature kicks in, when you feel your pride rise up, and the, the, when you, when you can step outside yourself and look at these trials, like Lord, what are you trying to show me in this? I know you're a refiner. What are you trying to show me that I need to get rid of in this trial? You no, know, because that's that's constantly what what we're what we're doing. We're breaking chains. We're we're, we're shrugging stuff off. So if you can step outside your feeling and look at what He's trying to teach you. That's when yeah. you really grow. That's right. And when you say teach you, he's saying, hey, I want you to start thinking like this. Yes. I mean, that's yes. that's what we're talking about here, the renewal of the mind. And back to the whole purpose of this class, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I mean, could you imagine taking 20 years to, to, to in your stubbornness to change the way you think? Could you, could you imagine taking 20 years sitting on a pew somewhere trying to, ch- you know, one, one hour every Sunday... That's all you ever did, trying to figure out how to change the way you think because you're so stubborn. I mean, this is the fast track into glory right now. Like, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about full submission, baptism full of the Holy Spirit in the perfect will, like in that cuss, in that sweet spot of, of, of the kingdom of God. Like, this is what this class is about. Amen. Not knowing exactly what to pray for, but guess what? Holy Spirit does. Amen. Mm-hmm. He knows exactly what to, you might yeah. respond a certain way, and you're like, "Wow, why did I respond that way?" And you can't really pinpoint it, and you don't really know. But guess what? Holy Spirit knows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And He's just saying, "Will you trust me with that? Yeah. Will you trust me? Will you trust me when you pray in the in the Spirit? Will you trust me that I'm going to go after that thing that's been holding you back?" And the answer is yes, I trust you. I trust you. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3. 1 through 3. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as the spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are not still not able to for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Mm. And that word envy means self-seeking. Self-seeking. All about self. It's that old nature that we try to... That's not there anymore because we've been born again, but it tries to come back and it wants to control you. But it has to be transformed. 
through what? The Word. I'm going to think like you. I'm going to, I'm going to yield to your thoughts. And we're going to look at that. We're going to go over to James 3. I'm going to yield to your choices. What I should choose. And I'm going to yield to the way I feel about certain things. Now, is it going to be a process? Probably. Because like Josh said, we've been, doing, we've been thinking this way, feeling this way, and choosing this way for 20 or 30 years. And now all of a sudden, but here's the thing. In and of ourselves, it would be impossible to do it. But with the Holy Spirit, yeah. we can do all things. He's like calling us deeper. Like that's what he's whispering. He's like, come deeper, come further. There's always more. And I mean, that's just that's just what I've I've been hearing. Like with the with the hunger that the Holy Spirit gives you, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. Come deeper. Amen. And you know, a lot of this is is intimacy. Intimacy is number one. Number two, he wants to protect us because we're about to read in James. It says. Where there is self-seeking, there is confusion in every evil work. Mm -hmm. In other words, if I continue to think this way, if I continue to make these choices, if I can continue to feel this way, then I'm going to get destroyed. I'm going I'm to open the door and I'm going to give the enemy an inroad into my heart, into my, into my life, into my marriage, into my relationships, into my finances, all because I want to be stubborn and prideful and I don't want to change. Bottom line. And he's sitting here the whole time and he's just knocking. 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 Man, I don't want just some of you. I want all of you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He wants all of us. He didn't just want to be Savior. He wants to be Lord. You want to do some great exploits and you want to see God really move mightily through your life? Just say yes. Completely surrender. And I'm telling you, man, you're still going to have, the enemy's still going to be coming in because the minute you begin to press into your destiny, he's coming. But guess what? In this world, in this world, you're guaranteed to have trials. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Be of good cheer. Have joy. Mm -hmm. Be glad. Why? Because I have overcome the world. Jesus said that. I was just reading that this morning. That's the key. That's the key to victory right there. Be glad and have joy. Every day, all day. No matter what's going on. Amen? James 3, 13-18. And we're talking about mind renewal. We're talking about allowing God to come into our the way that we think. We're talking about allowing God to come into the way that we feel. We're talking about allowing God to come in and influence and empower the choices that we make. It's a game changer. Yeah. All right. 13 through what, Pastor? 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy, and now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Where there is self-seeking and envy, there is confusion in every evil work. You know that our, our very prayers can be a runway for the enemy? Our prayers. If we're praying out of self-seeking, if we're praying for someone to change just to make our day better so that we can have a better day,
That's, 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 that's thinking about me. And that gives the enemy an inroad. Mm-hmm. I can shift in a relationship. If I'm praying for my spouse, oh, I wish my spouse would, you know, so my day would be better and our marriage would be better. Man, that's twisted. We need to pray that they would understand and learn who they are in Christ. Yeah. I, I want to do stop you there, Pastor, and not to... Uh, Jesus is just tickle pink you're praying, right? Sure. Uh, he, he's, just ex- he's just really excited that you're praying, and that takes some time and some maturity. So don't be condemned. You know, if you're... No condemnation. If, I mean, if you're praying like, Lord, fix this person, is for, just remember... Paul is talking about in Corinthians 13. He's like, you could pray in tongues of angels. You could do all this stuff, but if your motivation is not love, it's really, yeah. Yeah, this is not to bring condemnation. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, just, listen, God, seriously though, God is wanting to take us to another level. Amen. Yeah. All right. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. Right. I spoke as a child. That's right. Right? But when I became a man, I put away childish things, and I believe that God is telling me, I'm saying us. It's time for us to put away childish things. I want to go to the next level in, in my marriage. I want to go to the next level in my finances. I want to go to the next level in this ministry as a pastor. I want to go to the next level. And if I want to go to the next level, I've got to stop thinking like a man. I've got to start choosing like a man. And I've got to stop feeling like a man. Level up. And I've got, yeah, I've got to man up. I've got to man up. And I've got to say, God, you know what? You're right. You're right, and I gotta humble myself. And I'm gonna humble myself. And if one of y'all come to me and check me, I'm gonna say, You're right. You're right. And that's humbling yourself. And God brings correction, and He brings correction through His Word. That's how God teaches us, Jake, through His Word and through the Holy Spirit. You know, and He'll bring that Word and He'll say, Look, this is what you did, but this is what you really should have did. And you can either say, Bump that. And you can keep going around the mountain. Mm -hmm. You know? (laughs) The Bible says that God resists the proud. Mm -hmm. You know what that looks like? (laughs) Yeah, why would you struggle with God? Can you you imagine pressing against God and trying to get Him to move out of your way? Like, But He gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. You want to be exalted? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you. Yeah. And that's just not that's not just with the with the things that that's with everything. Yes. That's with everything. Yes. Yeah. That's why he doesn't just want to be Savior, he wants to be Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to be Lord over every thought. He wants to be Lord over every choice. He wants to be Lord over every emotion. I'm not saying I've arrived. I promise you I haven't arrived. I'm trying, I'm striving. I see it. He's showing me. <laughs> And every day, if I miss it, I'm, 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 I'm getting back up. I'm like, Daddy, I missed it today. And he's like, that a boy. I love you. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Get back in the game. It's all right. It's all good. I know you've been, maybe I haven't been praying it out like the way that I'm saying, you know. But I, I, I see it. He's showing me in the Word. He's giving me revelation. And he builds his church on revelation. And when he builds his church on revelation, the gates of hell won't prevail. And He's revealing Himself to me and He's revealing His Word to me and I'm growing in that direction. Every day I'm growing more and more in that direction. Yeah. I think that's why the baptism of the Holy Spirit is so important. The prayer language is so important. Like you can't miss the mark. Like you're on... You can't pray amiss. Yeah. It's, It's the rest. Isaiah 28 calls it the rest and the refreshing. I dare you to try to pray in the natural for any lengthy period of time. You, I'm telling you, you'll get tired. You know, you'll run out of things to pray about. But when you pray in, pray in the Spirit, man, you're, it's a rest. Yeah. And there's a refreshing that comes. Right? And there's a, just a confidence in knowing I just prayed the perfect will of God. Man. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. And in that presence. Yeah, yeah it says, uh, don't accuse a servant to his master. So when we're praying, and we're praying for someone, you know, we, we need to be, don't accuse it. It can't be, oh, Pastor Chris is this. Please, God. You know, that's not, yeah, that's not a good, that's not a good spot. 
Amen. Look at Second Peter. So this is the same dude that was always putting his foot in his mouth before the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Before he was born again, he was putting his foot in his mouth. But after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this dude was on fire. Peter. All right. Second Peter one. One through four. The Simon Peter, a bond servant and Woo. apostle of Jesus Christ. Mm. To those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature that through these promises you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust hmm. look at this this is this is this is so awesome he's already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness everything that we're reading in his word all his instructions the, the purpose of his word is to instruct us to bring us into spiritual maturity into his life and into a life of godliness amen and when we agree with him and we tap into that grace grace and peace multiplied to us then we can partake of the divine nature we can live it we can live in that divine nature yeah Awesome. Through the word. You know? Or look, the bottom line is we choose. We choose. Just like in the, let's go to Deuteronomy 30. <coughs> Just like in the beginning, Adam had a choice. He had the two trees. And we often talk about back in the garden. Um, you know, and I believe that. That we are back in the garden. And every day we have a choice. The way that seems right to man in the Word. Every single day we have that choice. But Deuteronomy 30, let's start with verse 11. It says, For this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. See, I have set before you today life, and good, death, and evil. In that I command you today the, to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commandments, His statutes, and His judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your hearts turn away, so that you do not hear, and are drawn away, and you worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today, that you shall surely perish, and you shall not prolong your days in the land which you when you caught which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live, and that you may love the Lord your God, and that you may obey His voice. And that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days. And that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. Amen. Same thing he said in the beginning. Uh -huh. Same thing he's saying today. We have, we literally have no excuses. We have, we've been born again. 
Now, I want to remind you, we're not talking about the law here. We're not talking about the law and in, in, in the, the 619 laws and the Ten Commandments. We're talking about the law of love. We're talking about loving God with all your heart, soul, and strength and loving your neighbor as yourself. Prior to being born again, it was impossible to do this. And we see this in, in Romans chapter 7. As a Jewish man under the law, Paul struggled to do the right thing. He knew what was right, but he couldn't do it. But as a born-again believer, Jesus has taken away all the excuses. We've got a brand new heart. Ezekiel 36 says He's taken out that heart of stone and He's given us a heart of flesh that we can love like Him and keep His commands. We can love Him and we can love others. So He's killed that excuse. He's given us the power of the Holy Spirit. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in that heart, that agape love heart. Romans 5, 5 says the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So we've got a new heart. We've got the Holy Spirit. We've got the blood of Jesus that's been applied to the doorpost of our hearts. We've got all the precious promises that are yes and amen. We literally have no excuse. I'm, a man. I'm just a man. Stop it! Stop it! No! Gird up your loins and let's do this thing. Let's take some ground. Let's take back all that territory that the enemy took. Let's tap into the finished works that everything that Jesus paid for through the cross, through, through the life, death, and resurrection. He says He always causes us to triumph. He doesn't say sometimes... He always gives us a way of escape. What's the way of escape? His Word. Always causes us to triumph. And those two trees are still before us today, I believe. The way that seems right to man, which leads to death. And what? Life and the blessing. Choose life, He says, so that you and your descendants to live. Why does He give us a choice? It says in Hebrews that without faith it's impossible to please Him. For those who come to Him must first believe that He is and that He's what? Rewarder. He's a rewarder. Why does He want us to choose life? Because He's a rewarder. You know what the reward is? He's the reward. He's the reward. He wants to flow in us and through us, and He wants to use us as His agents on the earth to cover the earth with His glory, His image. It hasn't changed. That was His will from the beginning. He hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we choose life, we help fulfill His desire and His will on the earth. And all of heaven is backing us. Amen? Amen. Delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. But if you delight in Him, He is the desire of your heart. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Are y'all happy? Amen. Amen. I'm happy. Woo! Man, He's been good to me. Amen. He's been so good to me. I'm going to send you up. I was thinking about that this morning. Man, he has been so good to me, man. He's restored everything, man. Everything the enemy took, he's given me back with interest. Amen. Man, for the establishment of his kingdom. Man, he's been so good, and it's just going to keep getting better and better and better. Man, just stay focused on him. Whatever you focus on is what you'll see. If you focus on the negative, then you're going to see the negative. If you focus on the good and you focus on Jesus, and that's what you're going to see, and that's what's going to be produced in your life. Yeah. Amen. All right, yeah. let's close. Uh, David Go ahead. Took all, uh, you know, all his victories and put them in his tent. So what's in your tent? You know, that's how I like to look at that too. You what's in your wallet? Head. Huh? What's in your wallet? <laughs> hey, yeah, there you go. Capital uh, One. Yeah. I got it. The old American Express. I'm just playing. I think I got a laugh, but able to. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs>